Having an unemployed loser like you around will be a bad influence on my baby. I took the liberty of tossing all your stuff in the garbage, so never come back to the house. Your mom is super mad at you right now. Huh? Listen up, Sarah. I've got something to say to you, and you're gonna listen. How long have you been living like this? Never, not even in my wildest dreams, did I think I would get here and find out that you're unemployed and just sitting around playing with your computer all day. I won't stand for this. You need to go outside and get yourself a job right now. I won't let you just stay in your room all day as long as I'm here. Huh? I came here specifically in order to be able to spend the rest of my pregnancy in peace and quiet. How am I supposed to do that with you around all the time? You're gonna ruin everything. I bet you planned all of this, didn't you? I feel so sorry for my brother having to deal with you. To think his own wife waited until he was out of town on business to quit her job and start mooching off of him like a freaking parasite. How many times do I have to explain this to you, Susie? I am not unemployed. I did not quit my job. We've been through this before. And I am not just playing with my computer all day. I am working. I've been working from home for a while now. Again, I've told you all of this before. Oh, trust me, I remember that pathetic excuse. I didn't believe it then, and I don't believe it now. There's no way a company in this podunk little town would let you work from home. They probably don't even know how to use the internet out here. It's nothing but a bunch of hicks. And you're using the fact that mom doesn't know anything about computers to trick her into supporting you. Ugh, I am not in the mood for this right now. When I first heard that you were quitting your job in the city and moving out here to live with mom, I was happy. Mom hurt her back recently and she's been having a pretty rough time of things living on her own. I was glad that you were going to be around to help her. I thought, gee, isn't it great that my brother married such a kind, caring woman? But now that I know what you were really trying to do, I am absolutely disgusted. You make me sick, Sarah. Susie, please, for the millionth time, that's not what this is. Your brother and I genuinely did decide to move in here so we could be there for your mom to help her out when she needed it. At first, I was going to quit my job in the city and find a new job in a company closer to our house here. But my company wanted to find some way for me to stay with them, and they agreed to allow me to work from home on a permanent basis. Permanent? Yeah, right. Yeah, it is right. Anyways, thanks to that, I was able to keep my old job and move out here. Your mom was thrilled when I told her the good news too. Since I'm home all day, I'll be able to help her out if she falls or needs help with anything. I understand why you doubt that story. It sounds almost too good to be true. It is too good to be true because you made it all up. And just so you don't get too cocky, you should know that I have hard evidence that you're lying about having a job. So you might have fooled my kind and trusting mother and maybe even my brother, but you will never, ever fool me. I see right through you. Evidence? What do you mean evidence? I don't see how you could have evidence. I'm unemployed since, well, I am unemployed. What's your evidence, Susie? Let's have it. You want to see my evidence? Fine. I have a first-hand account from a close, trustworthy friend of mine that you're unemployed. We went out to lunch a while back to catch up, and she told me some very interesting information. She said that she sees you hanging around the park near City Hall all the time. Not only that, she sees you walking around late at night a bunch too. You've got enough free time on your hands to be strolling around the park all day and night. Then you're definitely unemployed. What? That's your evidence? That's all? That's just you jumping to conclusions. I go for walks in the park during the day. That's literally all that is. Being in the house working all day makes me feel kind of claustrophobic. After several hours, I start to lose focus and get cramps in my legs and back. So I've been taking about an hour-long walk every day around lunchtime to get some fresh air and stretch my legs a bit. So that's why your friend sees me in the park every day. Do you understand now? Oh yeah, I understand everything perfectly. I understand that you're definitely unemployed. You mean to tell me your company lets you take an hour-long break in addition to your lunch break? Nice try. But you should have come up with a better cover story than that. You're a bad liar, Sarah. <laughs> My company told me that they didn't mind if I work an irregular schedule, as long as I get all my work done every day. I can work whatever hours I want. Plus, I start my work an hour earlier than most of the company's employees do to make sure I have enough time for my walks. It's a great place to work. They have a very modern view on work-life balance and are very flexible with things like hours and breaks. Wow, 
You already made up another lie to cover up the gaps in your last one? You do work fast, but you forgot one thing. What about your walks late at night, huh? You got a cover story for them too? Well, let's hear your explanation, Sarah. What's so important that you're fine with abandoning my mom at home so you can go out on the town? Wasn't that the entire point of you moving in with my mom? Okay, that's just an exaggeration. I'm not going out every night. Only about once a week or so, that's all. I just go out to the convenience store down the road to pick up a drink or a snack or something. And for the record, your mother is the one who sends me out some of the time to get her a snack. What? My mom wants you to go out and drink like a college girl every weekend? I'll let that college girl jab go for the time being. Yes, she does encourage me to go out occasionally. With Roy out of town on business for the month, it's just me and your mom all day, every day. She feels guilty about that. She's always telling me how sorry she is that I'm stuck hanging out with my mother-in-law all the time. So yeah, she sends me to the store to pick something up for her. But it's actually just an excuse to let me get out of the house. But I always make sure to be back before 9 p.m. so she won't be alone. Wow, you are really good at making up lies as you go. <laughs> you are desperate to avoid having to admit that you're an unemployed loser. Come on, Susie. Really? After all that, you still don't believe me? Listen, Sarah, I'm going to be here for a while, even after the baby is born. And while I'm here, I will not allow you to be slacking off around the house all the time. Wait, even after the baby is born? I thought you were going to go back home once the doctors cleared you. I was thinking I might stick around a while longer, say, like, two years or so? Two years? So you see... I can't have an unemployed loser around my child. You'll be a bad influence on them. Now, go and get the newspaper, flip to the Help Wanted ads, pick one of them, any one of them, and apply now. I don't care what my mom and brother will tolerate out of you, I'm much less forgiving than them. Yeah, I noticed that. Since that should be clear, I'm taking off. I'm going to meet up with a friend for lunch. By the time I get back, I expect you to have made no fewer than five applications. Got that? Hey there, Mom. I'm sorry to call you while you're out shopping. Do you have a moment? I need to talk to you. Hello there, Sarah. I just sat down in a cafe to have a bit of coffee before coming home. What is it, dear? Is there something wrong? Well, kind of. It's about Susie. Is it true that she's going to be living with us for a long time after the baby is born? I was just talking to her now, and she says she's planning to stay here for two years. What? Two years? Is that what she told you? Uh-oh, from the sound of things, that's news to you too. It's the first I've heard of it, yes. That girl won't tell me anything even when I ask. She did say something about feeling like just being here for two months wasn't going to be enough. When I think about it, that does sound like she was intending to stay here for quite some time. But she's never given me any specific time frame for when she'll be moving back home. But I can't believe it. She's intending to stay with us for two whole years? Yeah, that's way too long, I know. I feel so sorry for her husband. Does he know what her plans are? I wonder. He's got to be feeling terribly lonely right now. Ah, uh, about that. The truth is, Susie and her husband have divorced. What? Really? Yes, and I don't know any of the details, just that they're divorced now. She didn't tell me what happened between them, just that they're divorced. She said she's receiving alimony from him and not to worry about anything. But I'm still worried. How could I not be? And I can't have her living here for two years. You feel the same way, don't you, Sarah? Yeah, I'm against it. I'm working from home and having her here for that long might create problems with that. Also, what's really bizarre is that Susie is totally convinced that I'm unemployed. What? Doesn't she know that you're working from home? I tried to tell her, but she wouldn't believe me. No matter what I said, she just brushed it off as an excuse. She says that she doesn't want me to have a negative impact on the baby and that I should look for work right away. What on earth is wrong with that child? I'm so terribly sorry you had to deal with all of that, Sarah. I'll try talking to her about it myself once I get home. I'll also need to have a talk with her about how long she'll be staying with us. Two years is just too long. So don't worry about a thing, Sarah. I'll take care of everything. That's it. You are getting out of the house today. I can't believe you'd stoop so low as to turn my own mother against me with your lies. 
How did you convince her your ridiculous story was true, huh? Are you threatening her? Threatening her? That's nonsense. I would never threaten her. Oh, yeah? Well, then, explain why my mom is kicking me out of the house instead of you. There's no way she'd do that unless you were threatening her into doing it. Whoa, she's kicking you out? She came to me all in a huff this morning. She was trying so hard to get me to believe your lies about working from home. Oh, and she even backed up your lie about her telling you to go out and get plastered every night. Just how shameless can you be? So I was left with no other choice but to tell her the truth about you. I told her that you were a liar and that you were just using her so you could slack off at home all day and not have to work. I was expecting her to get mad at you, but no, she got mad at me instead. She said that if I was going to talk about you like that, then I'm no longer welcome here. She tried to throw me out of the house. Wow, I can't believe it. Your mom was willing to go that far to stick up for me. I'm so touched. Oh, I'm so glad for you that your little scheme is succeeding. But I knew I had to find some way to prove to get her to see that you were lying. So I went into your room. You went into my room? Fortunately for me, you were on one of your little walks at the time, haha. -ha. And I found something really, really shocking. There was absolutely nothing in that room but one single computer. And when I turned on the screen, you were in the middle of watching a movie on Netflix. Is that what you call work, Sarah? Watching movies? I found you out. I knew you were nothing but an unemployed loser. But I don't use that computer for my work. I use my laptop, which I happen to be holding right here in my backpack at the moment. I thought I'd treat myself to a nice relaxing day of working at a local cafe. Are you kidding me? Give it up already! I have all the evidence I could ever need to prove that you're lying about working from home. And you're still making up more lies? I'm telling the truth, though. Admit it! You're unemployed! You're taking advantage of my brother being out of town on business and lying and threatening my mother into compliance. You quit your job so you could mooch off my mother and brother for the rest of your life. No, I didn't. Please, Susie, would you just listen to me? I don't want to hear any more of your lies, Sarah. I don't ever want to see your face again, either. You are no longer welcome in this house. Don't worry, I did you the favor of packing up all your things. You'll find them all neatly stuffed into the dumpster out in front of the house. You don't need to thank me. I was glad to do it. <laughs> you what? You threw away my stuff? That's right. And just so your old room doesn't go to waste, I've already moved my stuff in. You didn't deserve this room anyway. It's the biggest one in the house. I don't believe it. You're completely insane, Susie. What is wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. Unlike you, I'm contributing to society by raising my child in a healthy environment. Having an unemployed loser like you around would damage me and my baby's emotional health. Your mother is furious, you know. Huh? I've never seen her this angry before in all the time I've known her. Geez, I would have been terrified to disobey her if she were my mother. I wish you could see her face right now. It's incredible. What? Wait, that's impossible. My mom isn't with you. She was just at the house not too long ago. We were talking for a long time about all the reasons she should kick you out. Yeah, and she saw you force my door open right after you finished your mindless ranting. After that, she came to me right away to tell me what happened. She said she tried to get through to you, but you wouldn't listen to her. And also that she has no idea what sort of nonsense you were going to pull next, so I should probably stay at a hotel or something tonight. She seemed serious about it, too. She told you that? Yeah. Apparently, she didn't know what you were doing with my stuff. All she knew was that you had totally lost your mind. It's actually kind of a relief that you messaged me like you did just now. I was terrified not knowing what was going on, but now everything has become much clearer. Seriously, Susie, you thought it would be a good idea to throw away the belongings of the household's breadwinner? It makes total sense why she'd be as angry at you as she is right now. Wait, just one second, Sarah. You're not the breadwinner. You're unemployed. The only bread you could win is whatever they serve down at the homeless shelter. You're still going on about that, I see. And another thing, there's no way my mom's that angry at me. If anything, she's probably super grateful to me. <laughs> And why would that be? 
My mom's way too nice for her own good. She could never stand up to you by herself. But I know that she wanted you out of the house just as much as I did. I bet it was tearing her apart having a deadbeat like you for a daughter-in-law. She was only putting up with you because she was desperate for help around the house, and you were her only option. I'm sure that right now my mom is crying tears of joy, thanking me for having the guts to call you out. I'm crying tears of rage, you impotent little fiend. You are going to repay Sarah for every single thing of hers that you destroyed, and you are to be out of my house by the end of the day. Wait, Mom, is that you? I've had more than I can stand from you, Susie. Pack your things and get out immediately. I will never allow you into my house from this day forth. Don't ever show your face around here again. Mom, come on. You don't have to pretend. You can tell Sarah exactly how you feel about her. I'm here for you. I know you're grateful to me for kicking her out of the house for you. You can admit it. I bet you're so relieved that I threw out all of her stuff already too. Hold your foul tongue, Susie. How can you say those vile things about Sarah after all that she's done for us? You ungrateful little wretch. I meant what I said. I want you out of my house. Pack your things and go, now. But, but why? I got rid of her for you. You should be happy. She was just leeching off of you and Roy. For the final time, Susie, Sarah is not unemployed. She's working from home, just like she told you. I know that for a fact because her company's representatives have stopped by the house personally on multiple occasions. They send gifts too. You know that box of sweets you ate by yourself? That was a gift from her company. It was. Also, she allows me to use her annual employee discount at the spa resort in the next town over. Imagine that. Sarah could take a day for herself to relax, but she gives it to me instead. She's such a thoughtful girl. So tell me, Susie, what do you say now? Will you still insist that Sarah is unemployed, even after all of that? So you mean she was telling the truth? She's working from home and she's not just slacking off all day? Yes, and despite that, you've been berating her as being unemployed all this time. How dare you try and kick her out of my house? Okay, well, hear, hear me out, Mom. Let's just say, for the sake of the discussion, that Sarah really is working from home. There's no way she can be making that much money. I mean, if they're letting her do it from home, her job can't be that important. Sure, she might not be unemployed, but she probably makes so little that she might as well be. Even if she does have a job, you don't need someone like her around. I was right to kick her out of the house. I see you're bound and determined to get Sarah out of the picture. You're anxious to stretch your legs in her spacious room, aren't you? But it's too bad for you, Susie. I'll have you know, her income last year was over $500,000. So you'll have to find another excuse. What? $500,000? No way, that's not possible! How could some average nobody like her earn a salary like that? It's not just from her salary. She has multiple streams of income. They all added up to 500000 last year. That's ridiculous. She makes plenty of money from her salary alone, though she's a quite high-ranking person in her company. I think her salary there is around $200,000. And she was prepared to give that up to live with me. That girl is one of the most generous, caring people I've ever met. I don't believe it. Sarah's making that much? She had quite the savings built up from when she was single, so she decided to make use of it once she came over here. She started up a cafe and also began investing in real estate. And all of her ventures are going quite well. That's how she made so much money last year. No way. I still don't believe it. That's just not possible. It's a bit hard to believe, I know. But despite how much she earns, she spends almost nothing on herself. She probably spends more on gifts for me than she does on any of her hobbies or interests. Wow. A little while ago, she bought me this incredibly high-end supplement that's supposed to be good for back pain. She even had a corset order made for me from an extremely high-end designer. 
And get this, she's told me she's concerned that the layout of the house makes it difficult for me to get around, so she's going to build us a brand new house next year. She is. She's a better daughter-in-law than I ever could have hoped for. In spite of her extraordinary wealth, she doesn't act like she's wealthy at all. Frankly, I see her as a true daughter of mine, not just a daughter-in-law. And you tried to throw such a special person out of my house. I will not allow you to do that. But mom! I want you out of the house today. You can take care of your baby by yourself. I won't be around to help you at all. You can't do that. She's not your daughter. I am. Aren't I more important to you than her? You're really going to kick me out of the house? Let me ask you this, Susie. Do you think you can fill her shoes? Do you think you can be the kind of daughter for me that Sarah is? Can you spend $500,000 in cash to rebuild my house for me? Of course I can't. That's an insane amount of money. No, I don't imagine you could. After all, you cheated on your husband and got pregnant as a result. And on top of that, the father skipped town to avoid having to pay you child support. You would have a hard time building a brand new house when you can barely even afford ordinary living expenses. What? Wait, hold on. I don't get it. How do you know about all of that, Mom? Who told you that? I know for sure it wasn't me. All I ever told you was that I got divorced. I deliberately withheld the details. I heard about it all from a friend of yours. What else was I supposed to do? No matter how many times I asked you, you would never tell me one single solitary thing about what happened between you and your husband. Someone told you? Oh no, I can't believe it. This is the worst. You were never supposed to find out. I thought it was strange that you were going out to cafes and restaurants and bars with your friends, despite being so late in your pregnancy. It gave me the idea that surely you must have told one of your friends about why you got divorced. So I just started going to your friends one person at a time and asking them if they knew anything at all about what happened. And eventually I struck gold, so to speak. You mean one of my friends, or at least someone I thought was my friend, went and spilled the beans to you? Come on! Who was it? Tell me who you told. I'm gonna destroy them for betraying me like that. Everyone who knew about what happened between me and my husband knew that I did not want you to ever find out no matter what. Oh, come now, don't give your friends such a hard time. It isn't their fault. After all, who could turn down an offer for $2,000 to divulge a friend's dirty little secret to their mother? I have to hand it to them. They were pretty tight-lipped about it at first. Once I started putting $100 bills on the table, they were much more willing to share what they knew, though. Oh, oh my. I think that actually makes me feel even worse about them betraying me. Just telling my mom is one thing, but doing it for money? I think I'm gonna be sick. Yes, and it was all thanks to a very generous contribution to my efforts by none other than Sarah. She's the one who gave me the money to buy your friends off with. There are some stones in life that must be overturned, no matter the cost. And in this case, I'd say a measly $2,000 was more than worth it to know everything that I do now. To be honest with you, it was actually invigorating. I felt like a detective in one of those old detective movies your father used to watch back before he passed. I haven't felt this young in years. Oh, well, I'm super happy that you enjoyed paying my friends to betray me. And now, I'd like you to go and start packing your things immediately. I never thought in my wildest dreams I would someday feel this ashamed just to be your mother. You treated Sarah awfully when she's been nothing but wonderful, loving, and caring to me. You called her unemployed. You called her a parasite. And you betrayed your own husband, slept with another man, and got pregnant with that man's child. Your life is nothing but a series of scandals. I will not have such a scandalous person living in my house. Neither you or that baby of yours are welcome. I want you and all of your things to be out of that house by the time we get home. Do I make myself clear? <coughs> Sarah, are you there? You've got to help me. Look, I'm super duper sorry for everything I said to you, okay? Now you've got to do something about your mom. 
please, Sarah, there's no one else I can go to. You're the only person in the world that I can count on. I'll do whatever you want me to do to make it up to you. So please talk to my mom into letting me live with you guys. Oh, and if it isn't too much trouble, could you add a room for me into the floor plan for the new house you're building? My own personal bathroom would be nice too. I have never heard such a brazenly self-centered apology as that in my life. And I doubt I'll ever hear one again. Look, this is just kind of how I am. I'm stubborn when I get my mind set on something. I never give up. I can't help it. But now I see how wrong I was, as well as what an amazing person you are, Sarah. You really are an incredible woman. To think a woman could succeed like you have in both her career and her personal life. You're an inspiration to women everywhere. I am so, so proud to have someone like you as my sister-in-law. So, please, have mercy on me. I'm asking you this as your sister, Sarah. Help me. I mean, you know how expensive raising children can be, don't you? And you've got plenty of extra money lying around. You could spot me a few G's with no problem. You're right, Susie. I could definitely afford to give you some money to put towards taking care of your baby. I'm making plenty as it is, and I have a lot of money in savings, too. But the reason that I've been able to build up that money for myself is because I follow one very, very important rule when it comes to money. Rule? What's your rule? Simple. Don't waste money, ever. And unfortunately, I'm afraid that rule will prevent me from giving you any financial assistance at all, Susie. Any money I gave you would be wasted for sure. I can't allow any of my hard-earned money to go to you knowing that you'd end up wasting it, needing more before too long. What? Come on, you cheapskate! You don't have any problem shelling out money for my mom! I heard you're building her a $500,000 house next year. So if you can give her that much money, why can't you give me anything? Because you're right. I am a cheapskate. I'm a massive cheapskate, actually, and I think that being around a cheapskate like myself would be terrible for your baby's emotional development. So, it would be for the best if you went and found your own place to live from now on. No. Yes, it's not just me saying that. Your mom feels the exact same way I do. As a matter of fact, she's probably even more opposed to me helping you than I am. And with that, it's finally time for us to say our goodbye, Susie. Maybe you could get the father of your baby to help you out now, if you can find him, that is. Immediately after that, Susie set out on the warpath. She was determined to find out which one of her friends had sold out the details of her divorce to her mom for $2,000. So, she started going to her friends one at a time and reaming each one of them out. She just couldn't help herself though, so she always followed up her tirades by saying, The only way I'll ever forgive you is if you let me live with you and give me money to support my baby with. I guess her friends thought the deal wasn't worth it, so they decided they were fine with her never forgiving them. Not one single person offered to let her stay with them. However, this wasn't the end of the road for Susie. Somehow, she managed to track down the guy she had cheated on her husband with. He generously agreed to allow her to stay with him and said that he'd support her financially as much as he could. However, it turns out that however much he could wasn't very much. In fact, it was practically zero because, irony of irony, he was unemployed. This left Susie with no choice but to find some way to make money working from home. She's getting by, but only barely. After all, she has three mouths to feed now. Herself, her baby, and her baby's daddy. Thank you for watching all the way until the end. If you felt good after watching this video, please like the video. If not, please leave a comment and give us your feedback. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Your comments and likes help this channel grow. We hope you enjoy our other stories as well.